So today I'm talking about OpenStack and OpenStack. Um, it should really say OpenStack and Ales because that's where we're really here. That's where we're about here today. Um, about me, I work at HP on OpenStack. I don't know what HP does. Um, and I work on Nova and Triple O. So we're here to talk about OpenStack. This is we've all seen this by now, I hope. Um, and this is the the nice little um, image from the website, and they call it a cloud operating system. I'm not sure if it is or not, but let's call it that for now. And so what does OpenStack do? OpenStack is a uh, cloud operating system that gives you APIs to programmatically manage, consume, and use compute network and storage resources. So you have your applic application, let's say it's Jenkins or something, you need to consume some resources. You say I need a compute node, I need some storage, I need some networking. You tell the API that and you get them. Nice and simple, it has some really great impacts. Um, and as many of you hopefully know by now, this is one thing the cloud does, it enable, enables velocity. So now have a really fast resource allocation, no more, I need a server, I gotta wait two weeks to you know, get the server into the data center, have it installed, have it networked, DNS, et cetera. Agility um, speaks for itself. And last, we could deploy test, or develop tests and deploy in the cloud. It's one environment for everything. It makes it easy. It's really easy to, to spin up resources to get rid of them, to scale things out, et cetera. And so you wanna take some of these properties and actually try to use them to make deploying OpenStack easier. So OpenStack has been very successful to date. These are a bunch of the uh, use cases today. This is once again taken from the website. Um, we have lots of happy users, but it turns out it's really hard to deploy and actually upgrade. So I don't know if any of you have tried to actually do that here and actually deploy OpenStack in a non-trivial environment. Turns out it's getting easier, but it's still a huge pain. So part of that is because OpenStack is actually really, really complex. Under that nice little shiny API we have, we have a whole bunch of different services. We have Cinder, Nova, Neutron. Those are compute storage network. We have Keystone for user management. We have object storage and block storage. Um, lots of different systems. We have a dashboard. And each of these little systems has a bunch of different services on a bunch of different machines. And we have databases and we have message queues. All of them you want to have highly available. And so this is actually a very simplified model of what OpenStack in production will look like. Yeah, it's a little crazy, right? Turns out this is actually really hard to deploy for some obvious reasons. It's really big, complex, and hairy looking. Um, wouldn't it be nice if this was easy to deploy? You didn't really have to sort out where all the stuff goes and you know, deal with all this by hand, deal with upgrading by hand and all that. So to do that, we need some sort of system that actually allows us to deploy big, complex systems. Turns out OpenStack is designed to do that. So why not deploy OpenStack with OpenStack? And this is where we have the inception music. Um, so this is now officially the OpenStack's official deployment program as of a few months ago. And so we're now actually working on making sure this actually works. And I'm going to talk about how we get there. Um, so this is uh, a quote from the actual description of the project. So triple O is the, is the use of self-hosted OpenStack infrastructure. That is OpenStack bare metal, Nova and Cinder, Heat, Disk Image Builder, and in-image orchestration to Chef, Puppet, to install, maintain, and upgrade itself. So we're trying to address some major issues here. Um, three main issues with triple O. One is bugs. We all have bugs. We all hate bugs. We have a few ways of solving that. Already in OpenStack today, we actually have a, a continuous integration process. We actually gate every patch in OpenStack on making sure we think it works. Um, our definition of works is never what you guys think means works, and so we're working on fixing that. And furthermore, we're actually going, in addition to continuous integration, continuous deployment. And this solves the split brain problem. I have this a lot. I don't know if you guys ever have this. Um, on a you know, personal level, it's you're working on two things at once. On a company level, it's you have the developers working on the next generation OpenStack and you have your production guys working on something six, to, six months to a year old. And they come to you and ask you a question about a bug that you probably wrote and you're probably the culprit of. And you don't know what it does because that was six months ago. And so we solve that by actually trying to get uh, deploying, deploying trunk all the time. So continuous uh, delivery. And this helps because instead of thinking back, and what did I do six months ago? It's, oh, I think I did that two days ago. And you go back and it's sort of fresh in your memory and you could fix it quicker. Um, we also want to have a common API and code base for the cloud and everything under the cloud. And this is just less code, less complexity. We already have one API we're sort of comfortable with. Why not use it again? Um, we also want to try to standardize the installation upgrade process. Everybody does it a little differently and that means everybody hits a little different bugs. And that means it's really hard to test on a thousand different ways upstream. So we want to actually have 
one more or less standard way with a, a bunch of variations in it that we could actually gate upstream OpenStack on. Um, another problem I'm trying to deal with is entropy and cruft. I mentioned this in the last talk a little bit, which is you do app get install one day and it's different a week later. So there's a bunch of different ways of solving this. Our approach is we, we bake everything in beforehand. Um, so instead of doing app get install and doing something like Chef or Puppet, after you, you um, stamp the image onto the machine, we actually do it before. So we change the image, and we have these golden images that has all the code in them. So you know that everything you're testing is the same code you're going to see in production. So you don't have to deal with you know, app cache mirrors and gem mirrors and pit mirrors and et cetera. We build everything beforehand, do it once, and then deploy it out. And so we only have the, all the software will be in the, the golden images and configuration and um, state is outside. And hardware failure, this is a standard one. We just use standard high availability, high availability techniques. So there's a bunch of different pieces of the puzzle for deploying something like OpenStack or many other systems. Um, provisioning, software configuration, state and orchestration. Turns out in OpenStack, one of the reasons why we have triple O is because we have these two great pieces, orchestration and uh, provisioning, that already do big parts of what we have today. So instead of using something else for orchestration, we have this nice tool called Heat that does that. Um, and for provisioning, we have this thing called Nova, which gives you uh, provisions uh, for you, compute resources. Instead of using virtual machines, we just use bare metal machines instead. So the same API on top and the underneath, instead of using a hypervisor, using a bare metal driver. And the last three pieces are the pieces that are a bit more, uh, um, that we had to write ourselves and they're a bit more independent and you could swap them out for things like Puppet or Chef. Um, disk image builder, this builds the golden images. And actually OS config applier and OS config refresh, we've actually renamed. Uh, we swapped config and applier and config and refresh for silly reasons. So now it's OS uh, apply config and OS refresh config. And those are how we actually manage the configuration of the state on the machines. So provisioning, we use the Nova API for on top of it, Nova boot, instead of giving you a VM that gives you a bare metal machine. And this is done via a bunch of different ways. Um, the standard way is Pixie and IPMI. This uh, piece of code is actually being currently pulled out out of Nova into Ironic, which OpenStack actually has trademark, so you can't use that anymore. Um, so Op Ironic is now a trademark of the OpenStack Foundation, which is pretty funny. Um, so now we can actually, this will plug in instead of a virtual, uh, a vert driver, I'll actually use Ironic instead in the future. So you say Nova boot, it'll talk to Ironic underneath everything, and that'll talk to uh, Pixie and IPMI or some third, uh, proprietary third party um, API. For software, we use golden images. Um, and so this does, encapsulates a known good set of software. So you, you build your image, you test it out. If it works, awesome, you ship it to production. If not, you try again and you, get a, you do it until you get a working image. Um, this excludes all configuration and persistent state. So all config files, things like database, that's outside of the golden images. And this is sort of the equivalent of packages at the cluster level, at least we think so. Um, another nice thing this does is it actually moves all the testing up. So instead of, you test everything in your, your lab, it all works out great, you go to production, something changed. You don't know what it is, it's not working. They have to go and debug everything in production. I've had to do that a few times in past companies. It's never pretty. So we actually move all this, the problems of things breaking and uh, dependencies changing and things like that up into the actual um, testing environment. So we have a small tool chain that we wrote ourselves for this, but you could use any sort of image building tool chain for this. And once again, we actually get to deploy things the same way we tested them. Bit for bit, it's going to be the same, except for your configuration and persistent state. So for configuration, you use OS apply config. And this is a little basic tool we have that uh, combines metadata, metadata delivered by your cloud, something like Heat or something else potentially, um, with the templates on your image to produce a working config file. So things like Nova config, that'll be in there, um, Swift, anything like that. All the config files we put into here, OS apply config, and that'll stamp out an image. It's a little template. It's nothing too complicated. Um, and once again, we actually wrote our own thing here instead of using a bunch of the op options out there, Salt, Puppet, Chef. And the reason is because we don't want to stick ourselves, uh, be dependent on a third party um, the reference impl implementation. And we know many people could be very heated about which one they like, Salt, Chef, Puppet. And so we wanted to stay out of that battle altogether. But you could use anything you want here. And OS Refresh Config, it's the, the, the other tool in the config, OS star config um, suite. And this is triggered when the metadata changes. So in addition to actually deploying the cloud, you actually want, want to be able to upgrade it too. So that means something's going to change. We need to be able to reconfigure things and, and, manage, and handle that. So there's a little uh, service that every time something changes, it'll talk to heat, restart services, coordinate data migrations, things like that. If we're doing continuous deployment, we actually need to have a way of 
doing this often. So it's a very basic process, pre-configure, configure, migration, and post-configure states. So a good example is if you're upgrading Nova, you'll do something like turn Nova off, upgrade the code, change the config file maybe, turn Nova back on. And if there's a database migration, you'll run a database migration in there as well. Orchestration, so we use Heat, which is open source official orchestration tool. Um, and it uses, it's uh, AWS compatible, it's uh, cloud formations. And it gives you this concept of stacks and you can build a whole complex system. So you can say, we have all of OpenStack and Heat um, templates. So you can say, turn on OpenStack and it'll deploy OpenStack for you. So this also supports any sort of configuration management uh, system within a machine. So this works on top of this, sends metadata to the machines and it manages turning machines on and off, but it doesn't actually do anything inside the machine, which is why we have the OS uh, refresh config and OS uh, apply config. And so this is actually a screenshot of what it looks like in Horizon these days. So this cool little uh, interface in Horizon actually show you the stack being built and being unbuilt. So we have this crazy concept of underclouds and overclouds. It's open stack on open stack, so we have lots of crazy layering like this. Um, the basic idea here is we have an undercloud which should be provisioning your overcloud, and your overcloud is what's actually is producing the, the KVM ser uh, servers that you're selling to people or giving to your tenants. And the undercloud be bare metal and that be used for you only. So undercloud is a fully HA bare metal cloud. So instead of re running Nova KVM, you're running Nova bare metal. It's self-hosted, so that means it's running on itself. And the goal here is to aim for one, two control nodes or so. So you have 100 nodes. Two of them would be a HA cluster for control and everything else would be blank servers that you can stamp images down using the Nova bare metal driver. And all these extra nodes are for the overcloud. The overcloud is a fully HA KVM based um, overcloud hosted by the undercloud. And this is orchestrated by heat running on the undercloud. And this could optionally use the same disk images as the um, undercloud for most services. So we have two different clouds and they're mostly the same so you could actually run the same. We build images once and they're for the undercloud and the overcloud. So this is what it all looks like when put together, which is a little mind-boggling and confusing to look at. Um, it took me a few minutes to even look at this a few times, you know, the first few times. Um, the basic idea is the first problem we have is how do we actually, you know, we have a, a data center, how do we actually get things started? It's the, the classic bootstrap problem. So our answer for that is we have a seed cloud, you're running in your VM, something like DevStack, or running a laptop, something like DevStack, you plug this into your data center, um, you have to register all the machines in somehow, hopefully you know what machines are in your data center, maybe you have them automatically discover, there's a bunch of different options there. Um, and now you tell your, under, your seed cloud that I want to scale out to the under cloud, or I want to scale out. So now it's a single VM. You want to have it scale out to the under cloud to your, your data center. It'll turn your single VM into a HA cluster of management nodes. And now you have one VM running open, or one machine running the OpenStack um, con, uh, core services on your data center and one copy of that running in your uh, laptop. So you unplug your laptop and they have a non-HA pair and now Heat knows it's a non-HA pair and it, has to, you want, it wants to fix itself. It wants to heal and scale back out. So you tell Heat, okay, go scale out again. So now Heat will take a second node from its pool of under, uh, the undercloud pool and convert that into another management node. So now you have two management nodes running in your undercloud and now it's all self-hosted. And So that's where that little circle is here. So this is actually running in itself. Um, so when it upgrades itself, you, you tell the undercloud, upgrade me and it'll upgrade itself. And so there's a bunch of, a bunch of uh, strange logic in there to make that all work with heat. You need to make sure that you can actually do rolling upgrades and things like that. We can't actually bring down the whole cloud for a minute every time we want to upgrade it for any the continuous uh, deployments. So now we have this under cloud using two machines out of, let's say, 100, and you have the other 98 are free. The other 98 are free now for your over cloud. And you can have more than one over cloud, and this is running um, Nova KVM or Xana or whatever you choose, and this is actually what the customers will be seeing. Um, so one of the problems actually today with the under cloud is that we want to keep this as, this is a very restricted cloud. And the reason is because it turns out things like Pixie and IPMI are not too secure yet. And so there's a bunch of security concerns about giving somebody, a user, full access to hardware. Um, BIOSes could be flushed, things like that. So the idea here is to keep the undercloud as a, a private thing for the deployer. And so the goal here is now we have, we get rid of the seed cloud and now we have undercloud running. And it looks something like this. We could have more than one overcloud on top and we have our undercloud and we're continuously deploying the undercloud and the overcloud, they're both HA and continuously deploying the same code to them. <laughs> so they're always running something close to trunk, they're always up to date, they're always in HA.
So this is the basic installation process I mentioned before. Um, create a bootstrap node, you plug it into the data center network, you enroll all your machines, you tell Heat to deploy your HA OpenStack templates. That's a nice Heat template that we have. Um, Heat drives the Nova API to scale out. So once again, we're talking to the same API that we're going to be using on top and below, the Nova API. Um, tells it to scale out the cloud Nova boot, spins up another bare metal machine, switch off the bootstrap node, tell Heat to recover, and now we have a fully working under cloud and we can deploy the over cloud. So managing your deployment. When events occur that change the state, heat will trigger, uh, heat will trigger causing the system to respond rapidly. So you lose a machine, you know, we're not in HA anymore, we discover that, now we need to fix it. Um, or if something happens, we want to upgrade the system to, we're rolling upgrades, we need to update all the machines, we'll tell, heat will manage that. And once again, heat also solves some of these problems, or any other uh, um, orchestration tool, which allows us rolling upgrades, make it really easy, and also we could actually roll back uh, as well. We just deploy the old image we had. So instead of using the, something didn't work, we tried to deploy on a few machines, everything went horribly wrong, we roll back to the previous known good image, and we're back to where we were before and we can debug what happened. Um, and we also, this, this whole process will prevent entropy by managing the cloud in the cloud ways, which is using images everywhere. And we'll try to store, up, and the only things we'll have to keep around between upgrades will be the persistent data we need, that we need and any configuration, which will be in persistent volumes. So the idea there is we don't have it today, but we'll have a, so Nova has a bare metal driver, Cinder will have a persistent volume driver. So they'll actually manage something like an LVM um, volume on the machine. So you can actually upgrade your machine and leave your LVM volume managed by Cinder um, around between upgrades. So this brings up a whole bunch of interesting possible applications now that we have this whole concept of clouds and clouds and crazy things like that. Well, one thing is we have more clouds everywhere and everybody likes clouds here, right? Um, we get this strange multi-cloud tendency. We have clouds and clouds. We could have different users, different things like that. Um, you can integrate this into your the CI, CD uh, infrastructure, continuous integration, continuous deployment. We could actually deploy part of, we could have a, take the under cloud and partition off a small part of it um, for a uh, separate uh, test over cloud. So you could have your production over cloud, your development over cloud, and your testing over cloud. So you could have a bunch of different over clouds. You could have two over clouds. You want to make a private cloud for somebody for a public cloud provider. You can spin up another private overcloud on top, and it'll be completely, completely isolated from every other overcloud on the system. But you have the same actually node, uh, uh, node, uh, node pool underneath that you can actually edit pull from. So you could very easily elastically scale up one cloud, bring, bring down another cloud, and all of a sudden bringing up and down clouds is very, very easy. So does this work today? Uh, what's left to do? Turns out it works today, and there's a lot left to do. Um, so we do this today. We have, um, there's, we have a, uh, a, a testing harness that's running all the time on trunk, trying to make sure this always works. Um, and it actually works quite well. We're not running this in production that I know of, but I don't know anything about how HP works. Um, so there's a bunch of big pieces missing here, and we're working on them, and we have solutions for all of them. We just haven't done them yet. So there's no persistent storage, so Cinder doesn't have a notion of this bare metal management. Um, we actually have some concept for having Neutron actually work in open, uh, in triple O today. So that's another big component is the networking. You need to actually have the networking managed. We don't have a full networking story sorted out yet for deploying the under cloud networking and the over cloud networking. We have the over cloud working and most of the under cloud working. Um, rolling upgrades aren't supported in heat yet, and this, or this concept of a canary upgrade. So we have a big system, 1,000 machines, 10,000 machines. You can't just upgrade everything at once. It just you don't, won't work. So you actually have to roll, you know, upgrade things slowly, try a few machines. So you do a canary deployment, you'll try a few machines, roll them up, see if that works. If it doesn't work, bring it back down. And if that does work, then you go and deploy everything slowly. So we have to, we don't have the, the full story sorted out for that yet, we're working on that. Um, we don't have the ability yet to actually upgrade Nova Compute without taking VMs down. So this is a really big one. You have your overcloud, you want to upgrade the image on it. You don't want to take down your VMs because your users are going to kill you if you keep taking down VMs every it's the cloud, right? You can't take it down every five minutes, and we want to do that. Um, so our solution to that is actually not actually upgrade the, the VM itself. Don't take it down and upgrade it. We actually want to rsync the, mount the root partition as read-only and rsync the changes to the image in, and then just re-kick services. So the idea is we'll have the, the VM will be running long-term, and you have a new image, new version of, you know, you fix critical bug 5432. And you want to, you need to push this out everywhere because your users are yelling at you, you just fixed it, it's a big bug. So you can actually deploy this out, 
you are seeing the new code over. So now you have a, the same, a new image out there, and you're not deploying from packages on production. You have, you know, you, you guarantee that your images are the same as your test images, but instead of bringing it down and bringing it back up, you are sync it over and you kick all your services. Now you have the new, uh, the new Nova compute running with the bug fix in it. Um, rudimentary HA support, we're working on this today, but we need everything to be super HA, work well, scale out, et cetera, and we're working on that. Um, and the general problem of, the one big thing here is that this is sort of like a double down kind of play for OpenStack, which is using it to install itself means you have double the fun if it all works and double the amount of failure. So you have a bug on your undercloud and your overcloud now. Um, so that, this is gonna help us actually flush out more bugs. Um, we need to be able to handle you know, network failures more. We're gonna see that on, on multiple layers now. Um, hardware failures we're gonna see on multiple layers too. Um, and so now we, can have, we have to make sure they have less bugs in the underlying system. And I know this is very fast, and there's a lot here, so I hope you guys have questions. Yes, the answer, the short answer to that is heat. So heat has this idea of this dependencies in the system. Um, you can see here this is you know, a database, some servers, and a load balancer, I think, in the front. Um, and it has this notion of the dependencies in the system. So you can actually use heat to manage that process. So heat will actually help you manage these. these it'll, it, you tell heat the interactions between the services, and it'll take things down accordingly. And this goes back to the whole idea that we have, want to use the same, you know, we already wrote this nice orchestration tool and we're still writing it. Why not use it for deploying the cloud and for the users of the cloud? Um, there's a core CI over there, so you could ask him. The answer is very, very responsive. We have, Triple O has members in most of the big projects. I'm Nova Core. We have some heat cores on the project. We have, I'm not sure if you have a new trunk core, but you have a bunch of cores all over. Um, and so we have a lot of good pull on the system. And when we have a bug, and if it's a critical bug, we know how to fix it. Um, so very responsive. Yes, uh, I don't know anything about that, though. So you have to ask somebody else on that. The answer is, this is all open source. None of this is, um, the team in HP that's working on this, we're all working upstream on this. So everything we do is public. We have a um, chat room, triple O on, on Freenode. Um, all the code is upstream on GitHub. So GitHub OpenStack uh, slash triple O incubator. Um, it's all there today. We're all trying to make this public as possible. And we think there'd be multiple. Red Hat's also very involved. We expect HP and Red Hat will both commercialize this at some point. We also have invested interest, which is HP has a public cloud. We deploy massive clouds. We want things to work really well. We want to do continuous deployment. We want to get rid of all these bugs that many people have seen. And so we believe in open source. We're doing it for everybody. Different part. HP turns out it's really, really, really big. Um, 300 something thousand. I think I'm in the printer department now. Um, I'm not sure. I know there's Converge Cloud, Public Cloud, and a few others. Yeah. You don't work with Mark Atwood or Monty Taylor? No, I work under Monty Taylor. Oh, okay. um, and I don't know who he works for, so okay. I may. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean? Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, t once we have the, the, the template to deploy with the overcloud, it's not hard to deploy an undercloud. So we have, it, it's sort of like, a, you know, we need images somewhere, we might as well put them in glance. We have the same, it's the, keeping the same API is sort of, that's sorry, what? That's correct, you put everything in, yeah, all the gold images go into glance. Um, so we actually have a, the problem with this is you need a lot of machines, right? So we actually have a, a Nova bare metal virtualization driver. Um, so the idea is you, that's right. So you could do it on your laptop, a big laptop, but a laptop. Um, so the idea is you spin up some instances outside and you have, you, have, you know, SSH to the power driver and it's a whole big convoluted mess, but it works. 
Um, yes. I mean, you can't put into production on a laptop, obviously, but. Yeah, we need bigger laptops, actually. There is a talk about that. Um, if you go to the Triple O incubator, you can actually see there is a, a uh, dev test, I believe it is. It is a, like a 40 step test or a 40 step instruction that will walk you through the whole thing. Deploy the undercloud on your laptop, deploy an overcloud on your undercloud on your laptop, and everything in between. Yeah, so please try it out. Um, we're very, we like bugs, so file bugs and we'll fix them for you. It gets slow, but. You have a bunch of different layers of virtualization inside of itself, and it's a little iffy at times, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's a bit slow, but it does work. Um, right, so the answer is in production, the answer is no. For running everything, you know, running 50 VMs in your laptop, no matter how many layers nested, it's gonna be slow, or 10, or whatever it is. Um, so in production, we're actually, there's, there's no actual errors of our, in, uh, in production. So we have the bare metal cloud, the idea is there that you, when you deploy a, an instance on the bare metal cloud, it's actually stamping an image down on bare metal, and it's a regular old machine, just like it was managed by another system. Um, then on top of that, you have KVM running on native bare metal, and everything's fast. Um, yeah, so there's, you know, the Docker containers is uh, one, op one option here for the overcloud, um, and the idea would be, the Right, so there's, there's, some, there's some caveats there. One is um, you have different kernels, you can't really do that in Docker. If you have a big system, that'll fix that. Um, if you wanna run really high performance things, let's say you wanna run something like Trove, let's say, or, or you know, database as a service or something else, you could actually instead of swap out you know, the, the KVM over cloud and use a, a Docker over cloud, let's say. So I don't know if we've actually tried Docker today. No, I think we've tried LXC on top, right? I mean, so for the, the under cloud, we don't use containers, we use bare metal. And that's sort of the, the difference there, but. Yeah, so it's, it's been great. We've had a great feedback from the community on it. Um, we have a bunch of other people that are joining in from other companies. Red Hat's very deeply involved, a whole bunch of others. And the goal is to one day, you know, we talked about things should be easy to install. Yeah, we agree. Right. Oh, exactly. Yeah. So we're. I mean, the deployment's the easy part, so to speak. It's the upgrades that are hard, and uh, you know, it's everything else after deployment. And so we're trying to make this easy. We want to make this sort of standardized as much as possible. Um, we don't actually. You know, we don't prefer any OS. We support um, uh, Ubuntu. We support Rel, or maybe Fedora. I'm not sure which one it is. Uh, and it will support anything else anybody else wants us to support. So we're trying to be fairly agnostic when it comes to different options. So you guys come along and say you want to support whatever, and you put some manpower behind it, we'll happily do that. Yes, this is, there's, there's a bunch of different way, ways you need to fix that problem. This is a big part of it. Um, a big step is actually being able to have an upstream tool that we could actually use to test upgradability. And so this is the big one. Uh, there's a bunch of things we could do before that, but we're really hoping that we're all embarrassed that we can't upgrade OpenStack at well. And so this is where it gets complicated. Um, from the, the triple O sort of story, you want to do N minus one to N. So every patch ideally should be a new, or every day, let's say, um, will be a new release. We ideally want to go every patch to trunk will be a new release um, as much as possible. 
Um, but we also want to support, because OpenStack does have releases, at least for now, and there's, we're trying to change that a little bit, um, we do want to actually support um, you know, Grizzly to Havana, too. So upstream testing, hopefully, will actually support both. Um, I actually tried that out recently, and it almost worked. Um, I was able to spin up a VM on a Grizzly compute node in a Havana cloud, which was surprising. Um, but th something like this could help, not only with just actually testing the backwards compatibility, but testing the upgrade process as well. Um, we hope to standardize sort of the upgrade process. There's some questions like, you know, what do you upgrade first? Um, and so hopefully we'll be able to standardize those in something like this. And then a downstream consumer of OpenStack could say, this is how they're testing it upstream. We don't like that. We'll tell them to do it this way maybe, and maybe they'll do that. But at the very least they know, this is hopefully a known path that works, which is not the case today. I mean, networking issues always bring things crashing down, but, right. Right, so that's, that's ultimately the goal, and that's why we're trying to make sure that we don't actually have to restart, um, restart VMs, you know, when you want to upgrade uh, software. And so the hope is that we actually, yes, bugs like, that, bugs like those will exist. Um, one of the benefits of having the same, you know, we're going to have the same code path on top and below. We'll hopefully hit the bugs faster, um, and we'll have less, you know, one less code path to debug, hopefully. Um, but we're going to hit those, hopefully, and hopefully we'll sort those out quickly. Yeah, um, kernel's a hard one, so you can't, we're not going to, there are ways of upgrading kernels, but we're not trying that, I don't think. Um, hopefully you're not going to upgrade your kernel every couple of days, in which case. Right, so, I mean, one option, this is the standard answer, obviously, is you could migrate VMs and things like that. Um, but if, if we wanted to, or somebody wanted to, there are ways of, of monkey, or whatever they call it, destroying kernels and upgrading them in place. And that's, that's an option, and we, I think, stayed away from that for obvious reasons for now. But, you know, case by case, that is possible. Very, yeah. Um, yeah, so depending on how you want to set things up, you could have one machine. I think right now we have um, the two core machines in the undercut running everything. So they're all running. Um, and that's going to change in the future as we want to make it scale, things scale out better. Um, there's a bunch of different ways you could do that. You could have as many images as you want. Um, we bake the images beforehand, and once you bake them, they're sort of set. They're not going to change. Um, and so hopefully that's not going to be a problem to have too many images. But we hope to actually use, you know, saying we're using KVM or using bare metal, it's a fairly small change in the, in the config. And so hopefully if we actually have the same uh, Nova compute, you know, Nova compute, um, use the same images for the top and the bottom as much as possible. Yeah, so we. Yeah, so you know, separating things out, we want to do that. Um, we haven't actually really sat down and, and decided how we want to do that yet. But there's many ways we could do it, and the, the idea is to keep, you know, do some of this as much as possible in heat and then existing tools whenever possible. And so we have a bunch of people on the heat team who are working on triple O, and they all, this is a great, you know, sort of deploying something big and complex like this is a great, you know, if OpenStack could, if heat could do this. You do almost anything. So this is a great use case, I think, for heat in a convoluted and horrible way. Any other questions? Yep. So today, if you're going to deploy on your side, are there stuff, things you can do today that would make it look easier to implement you know, when it's actually that's a really good question. Um, I think the answer is no. Um, 
the problem is you're going to have a whole different layer underneath for deploying everything and managing everything, which will be OpenStack. And so you'll have to do some, some sort of migration from there to here. Um, I guess the real answer is if you're going to, if you want to use this in the future, try to work upstream with us, say you're, what you want, tell us what you want and we'll try to see what we can do. So we're, we're you know, welcome. Do you want more and more people on this? It's an open source project. We'll have more feedback saying, this is a terrible idea, do it that way. That'd be great. Yeah, so um, I don't think we've actually approached that one yet. But, yeah. Right, yeah. Right. We have to actually migrate all the data to underneath and the databases and the et cetera. Any other questions? Thinking about it. So do you know actually the, I don't know the overlap between Heat and Bosch, do you? The overlap between Heat and Bosch? Yeah, that's, I mean, so it's recovery for us and it's also, I change something, make it look like the new thing that I want it to look like. I change the image, make it, make it do that. Right. Right, Th yeah, not nothing we're trying to address here is no. That's, like there's nothing here that it should be new to anybody. I think everybody's hit the packaging problem. Right, exactly. so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it should fit in pretty well. Um, yeah, so you deploy your undercloud and you just have a different image, um, you know, a Hadoop image, and you deploy that on your bare metal. Um, I mean, one of the, one of the, the reasons why you want to use OpenStack underneath is because we have OpenStack on top. That isn't to say that it's, if you don't have OpenStack anywhere, it, you know, it's sort of silly to use it for this. Um, but if you already have OpenStack somewhere else in your system and you want to use bare metal, you could actually, you know, build a separate image that's not OpenStack that uses, you know, whatever you want on there and deploy that. Right. It's when you're using OpenStack somewhere else in the system, we don't want to have two systems that do almost the same things with two different APIs on top. We want to try to use the same code base as much as possible for our, you know, whenever possible. I mean, I think it would be, but it's, I, I think there's better, you, there's, there's other questions you could ask if you're not using OpenStack. Like all of a sudden, I think there's more options that are, are really good, you know, things to evaluate. I'm not saying that don't do it if you're not using OpenStack, but when you're using OpenStack, it, you know, you want to use the same code base, you already have something that does the same thing. Instead of using, you know, provisioning VMs, it provisions bare metal instead of, you know, volumes in a, ephemeral, in a, in a VM somewhere or in a whatever, it's LVM module, you know, uh, volumes on a bare metal machine. So it's sort of there's a nice analogy with treating bare metal like cloud resources. Which makes it great if you want to you know, go from a bare metal environment to a virtualized environment for your system. Nova Boot will work the same way. So use some nice properties there. Going once. Thank you.